let's make a quick video on how to do some C++ programming here on your Mac. So let's uh, let's get started. What you want to do is you want to have the Atom editor installed. So I've already got it installed. I assume you can go to atom.io and uh, grab Atom. Uh, you can Google it if you want. First time you open it, you're going to get I'm going to close some of this stuff. There we go. So I usually work in temp, so that's why temp's showing here. But I could remove that project folder just for fun. Okay, so I'm just going to open straight out. So when you're editing C++ or any language, you're going to use a text editor. Um, you can use an IDE, and we'll talk about that later on in the course. But we want like a text editor that's made for programming. Technically, you could use Notepad or Text Edit or something like that. Um, but we're going to use Atom because it's a nice editor. It's open source, and it's available on Mac, Windows, Linux, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's create a new file. I'll use menus. I usually use the keyboard keys, but you you young kids don't seem to uh, get away from the menus. So I'm going to create a new file. It's untitled right now. That means it has no title. I should save this file even before I type. I usually save. I'm trying to remember to use the menu. So I'm going to save this, and it's going to ask you, okay, Ken, where do you want to put this? Well, on the Mac. Uh, the default is it doesn't show your home directory, but I like to change my finder default. So I'm going to save this. I'll put this in alphabetical order. I'm going to save this in my temp directory. Okay. And I'm going to save the name of my file. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, whatever you want. And always end for C and extension .cpp. That's the standard. Technically, again, we don't have to, but we want to because it's going to help us. Uh, I recommend not putting spaces or accents or anything funky in your directory names or file names. So I'm going to say whatever you want.cpp. There we go. We've got a file called whatever you want. And Adam automatically opens up like a project folder view on the left of everything that's in that directory that we're in. But here we go. So let's create a basic hello world. So let's include iostream. Careful kids, when you look on the internet, you're going to find lots of C++ examples. And C++ has been around a long time since Bjarni uh, created it. So you're going to find examples that don't work with our current compiler. You should stick with this standard. So I'm going to do include IO stream. Um, I tend to use for our courses using namespace STD. Um, that's not sexually transmitted disease, but it's standard. So. Let's just use using namespace std. What this allows is instead of typing things, uh, I'll show you here in a sec. I'm going to type void main. I know what's wrong. Relax. And I could type every time I need to use cout, which is the print um, method to the standard output of the IO stream library. I could have std two colons and cout every time I use it. This is called specifying the namespace. But if I've already said that my default namespace, I'm using the namespace std, every time I type something like cout, it goes, well, what's cout? What do you mean? Oh, it's the one inside std. So I'm going to go cout, or coot if you prefer, and whatever you want. I could just type whatever I want inside this string. Notice that strings start with a double quote, end with a double quote. Anything that's in there is going to be taken as the string, as the thing to output. You can check in the book on a title about strings or on some video about strings in C++. I'm also going to add an end line to the end of this output. Okay, And because it's C, by definition, or C++, we need to have a return value at the end of the function to, to signal to the operating system everything's OK. Zero usually signals everything's OK, because it's not good or bad. So now what I want to do, I'm going to try to stop using the menus, Ken. Uh, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to open up my Finder. I'm going to go to Applications. Whoa, that's weird. Applications, uh, Utilities, and the Terminal App. Normally, I would have just opened it with uh, the Finder search. So I'm going to make this window really big. What I'm doing here is View Bigger. I'm just doing it with the keyboard because it's faster. So when I open the terminal, or the shell, or some people call it the console, we'll notice it's the bash shell we're using. This is the same shell for Windows, Linux, Mac, for all of our uses. I'm thrown into what my home directory is. Again, my home directory is 
that directory, which on the Mac is users slash whatever your username is. So that's where I am. I'm going to need to change to the directory that I want to be in, where my file is. So cd is the command, cd temp. I can now see all my files are there, including that whatever you want .cpp. Okay. So now I need to compile it, because remember C++ is a compiled language. I need to type the whole name. Now if I type it wrong, like whatever you want .cpp, uh, actually it worked. It didn't have a problem with the cases, but some operating systems it will freak out about the case so I'll type it that way and C++ notice it complains it's saying hey whatever you want uh, on line 4 in column 1 there's an error main must return int and I'm saying void main oh silly Ken so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edit inside of uh, line 4 column 1 it says oh this should be an int okay cool so what am I going to do? I'm going to have to compile again. Look how fast I typed that. Actually, I just hit the arrow key, the up arrow key there. It's a really useful feature. So I type the up arrow key, and it shows me the command that I previously did. And I can keep going and see previous commands. I'll go back down. I'll go back down. G++, whatever you want, .cpp. No news. No news is good news. That means it compiled. If I do an ls, this is another command you'll learn. ls is a listing of files. I can see that the a.out is there. Excellent. That a.out is the executable file. Remember that C++ is going to compile, link the file, and create the executable file a.out. Now I can run this for various reasons. Your home, The current directory is not in your path, so you need to type dot diagonal, which means in this directory, the a.out. And I'm going to run it with a dot diagonal a.out. For you Windows users, if you're watching this Mac video, it's not a.out, it's a.exe because Windows is special. Um, and look, it types whatever you want, which is exactly what I told it to do. Uh, I'll do a quick demo on what happens if we have errors. Let's say I forget to put the closing quote there. You'll notice that Adam is friendly. It says all this green stuff is a string, but, it, it, but it's going past what it should. So there should have been a visual clue there that I got something wrong. But I probably wasn't paying attention. Let's try to compile that again. And it barfs. It says missing terminating closing quote character and it put the quote quote character in quotes to show it to you so there's the beginning and it can't find the expected oh it's because I'm missing the quote character let's put a period there to make sure it shows a period that looks better um, so let's run that again and I run the program hey it's still doing oh what oh it's because a dot out still there from the previous compilation that worked I need to always remember edit save compile run edit, save, compile, run. So we need to compile and then we need to run it and there it is whatever you want with a period. Uh, that's pretty well it. You're gonna edit with Atom. You're gonna run your program from a terminal. There, there's various reasons why we're doing this. Um, the set of tools we're using is the basic tools because I want to you get you to learn the basic tools before we start using an IDE and getting confused in lots of buttons. So that's the way we're running our main program. Um, Again, Atom works on Windows, Linux, Mac. Uh, the terminal is going to work on Windows, Linux, Mac. So no matter what tool set you have, you're going to have the tools you need to get through this. And of course, you can just you know close up the program. We're going to exit Atom, quit, terminal, quit, and we're done. Have a great day. <laughs>